Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. We've just released Tool version 3.6, which not only enhances performance and stability, but also introduces a lot of exciting new features and improvements. In the next 15 minutes, I'll take you through the highlights and demonstrate some tricks on how to make the most of these new additions. So let's dive right in. We improved the workflow for colors, the color picker now supports swatches that indicate all colors used in the current project. If you hold the control key and pick a swatch, it'll select and center all operators that use that color. That's super handy for cleaning up projects and aligning designs. You can also click on the input type to switch between different color input formats like hue, saturation, brightness, RGB, and so on. Speaking of colors, we added more interpolation types for gradients. Here's an example. Let's add an image level operator to our graph. It visualizes the current color distribution for a slice of an image buffer. That comes in handy to analyze things. If we were to insert color grading into our image and crank up the brightness, the image level operator would also nicely indicate color clamping. But back to the topic. Let's insert a linear gradient. By default, gradients use linear interpolation, which is what most users would expect and can see here. But for linear gradient, we could switch the interpolation to smooth, which looks way better. Look at that. To make gradients even more powerful, we also added a spline interpolation mode. You can use it to generate very fine-tuned gradients. In fact, if we insert a remap color operator to our image, we can now apply the same curve corrections like in Photoshop and do subtle color corrections. Or not so subtle. I just love how tools different building blocks fall together to allow such unexpected workflows. We also added some tweaks to tools already great keyframe animation features. Let's insert some keyframes to build a little animation sequence. As you can see, the dope sheet only shows keyframes of the selected operators, which can be annoying when switching between different ops to tweak them. For this use case, we introduced the new auto pin animation mode that keeps all animated parameters visible. You can use the keyboard shortcut Shift K to quickly clear that selection and start a new animation set. As you know, pressing Tab brings up the symbol browser. When you do this with a single op selected, Tool will nicely insert that new operator into our graph. We now use statistical information for sorting by relevancy in this case, finding use cases for inserting something between feedback and detect edges. In the same way, if we drag out a parameter, the symbol browser lists common ops to animate that. If we type AV for animated value and now press space, we can search for presets. Let's use the wave shape to drive the brightness of the detect edges. Another nice feature we've added is that you can now connect multiple operators at once. For example, if we create some value operators here, we can select all of them and drag out a connection line group. The symbol browser now suggests all operators that have a multi-input of a matching type. Of course, sorted by relevancy. Once connected, we can press the G key to automatically lay out the new group. This also works for adding connections to existing operators. And obviously this is implemented for all data types. So if we add some image operators here and do the same thing, we could combine them into a pick texture. Super useful. Let's delve into the exciting world of shader development, one of the coolest aspects of Tool. To make it even more accessible, we've introduced a new template for writing new image effects. 
simply navigate to File, New. Give your new effect a name, and Tool will generate the effect from the template while also copying all the necessary resources to your namespace. The shader will then open immediately in your text editor. For an optimal experience, we highly recommend using Visual Studio Code along with the fantastic HLSL Tools extension. This combination offers syntax highlighting, auto-completion, and those helpful little red squiggly lines that indicate errors. If we connect an input to our new operator, we can see that the template is a simple detect edges effect. Inside the operator, you'll notice a setup that provides several configurable settings. In our example, let's change the texture mode to wrap. Now let's take it a step further. We can use the context menu to add new input parameters. In the pop-up, we can search for available data types and select Vector2. Next, we'll add two new parameters named Frequency and Amplitude. We split these parameters into float values and connect them to the shader parameter buffer. Returning to our code, let's verify if the shader is functioning correctly. We'll return a vector 4 with the UV coordinates, and upon saving, the changes will be immediately reflected in Tool. However, we still need to include our parameters in the buffer at the beginning of the file. Once added, we can utilize them to create a small sign displacement effect. By adding a sign offset to the UV coordinates and incorporating our parameters for frequency and amplitude, we can achieve a simple deformation. Initially, nothing will change because our amplitude parameter is still set to zero. However, as soon as we adjust these values, we'll start seeing some nice outcomes. Now here's where the real fun begins, as we can leverage the impressive features of Tool on our new effect. For instance, we can make use of the Explore Variations window. With our effect selected, we can choose our parameters and generate random variations. We even have the option of increasing the level of randomization. Plus, anything interesting we discover can be saved as presets for a new effect. We can use our new effect to highlight some improvements to the parameter window. With the context menu for the parameter name, we can open the parameter settings. Here, we've added a bunch of new options to control how parameters are shown. Let's add a group and name it Original Parameters. Adding three dots will collapse this by default. One large group doesn't add much improvement, so let's add another one for our new sign options. A quick note here. Collapsing a group will still show modified parameters, which gives a nice overview of the applied changes. In the settings, we can also adjust how parameters are formatted. Let's increase the precision and add a little suffix to our amplitude. These suffixes are especially nice to indicate rotations. In version 3.6, we've redesigned playback and audio settings for projects. Let's create a new project and give it a name. As you can see, Tool automatically uses your nickname for the namespaces, so you can find it in the operator library later. You can now click on the playback settings to bring up the settings dialog. Tick the checkbox to enable playback settings for your project. You can now switch between using a soundtrack or a live performance mode. If you select a soundtrack file, the timeline background shows your soundtrack visualization, which is great for syncing. You can also set the BPM rate and tweak the sync offset if your audio file doesn't start on the downbeat. You can also choose if the timeline uses bars, seconds, or frames. In live performance mode, you can use the timeline for animations and cue points, or you can use the endless VJ mode and tap in the beat or sync to an external MIDI clock. Tool lists all available audio input devices and you can use them for audio reactive effects. The gain meter shows their level, which you can adjust with a gain setting.
Now we only have to create an audio reaction and connect it to our scene. And bang, audio reaction. All these settings are now stored with your project, so you can have different audio settings for each of your projects. As usual, we've added tons of new operators, but in this video, I'm going to highlight two of them. Let's start by building a little scene to show the new Render With Motion Blur effect. We create some points, add some noise, and animate the phase. Let's also add a camera and render the result with MSAA. When we now apply the render with motion blur, tool renders that scene with multiple passes and slightly shifts the time for each pass, which works especially well for things like animated particles. Nice. Finally, I want to show you two things I'm having a blast playing with. Let's look at this little example. Here we create a bunch of points and draw them. If we now insert the brand new custom point shader, we insert a fragment of shader code that is compiled on the fly. If we look inside the operator, we can see that it's using simple string replacement to insert our code snippet. You could have done the same thing by using the compute shader template from the application menu and create a new operator type as I showed you earlier. However, with the custom shader, experimentation is so much more fun. Within the shader, each point gets a variable called f, which runs from 0 for the first point to 1 for the last one. We can start typing and add a sign function to the positions. We can also use the parameters as frequency, scale, and phase. So simple stuff. Now, if instead of the positions, we set w attribute of the points, we get this wave-like shape here. Remember, we're writing a compute shader, which means that it's fast, very fast. So it'll work with millions of points. Let's load a mesh and use its vertices instead. Now we're getting somewhere. This little setup is a good segue into the final topic for this video, Tool's new Draw Billboards operator. Earlier, we had all kinds of slightly different methods to draw points. We consolidated all these options to this new flexible method. I linked a video below that goes through all these parameters and shows a lot of cool things you can do with this op. As a small example, let's open the Color Variations option and use the W attribute to change the color for each point. Further down, we see that we can also provide a texture input and that we have the option to use this texture as a texture atlas. Just to show off a little bit, let's quickly build a procedural atlas texture. Let's say we have a string. Let's say we pick the characters of this string. Now let's render these characters as text. We can slice the viewport into 4x4 four four cells and do all of that 16 times. If we then use the loop iteration variable i to pick the characters and the viewport slices, we built an atlas texture. Let's quickly increase the font size and render this into a texture and bang, look at that. We have some super nice geometry made of colorful characters. We really hope you like the new version of Tool, and I can't wait to see what you're going to build with it. We have a ton of new exciting features on the roadmap. As always, you'll find the latest release on GitHub at the link below. You can also join our open and friendly community on Discord. Remember, Tool is free. So if you're into motion design, VJing, or computer graphics, join us so we can build it together. <laughs>